What's going on guys? Welcome to Victims and Villains. If you guys are new to this channel, we are a channel that talks about mental health through pop culture. My name is Captain Nostalgia. I'm a writer, podcaster, and the director of our film festival, Horrific Hope. If you guys would like to submit your screenplays, short films, or feature films, links are in the descriptions below. And if you would like to sponsor the first ever film festival would be horror-centric and mental health-focused. Links are going to also be in the descriptions below with three tiers. And shout-out to our sponsors already for the 2023 uh, season that is going to be held at the Alamo Draft House in Winchester, Virginia, beginning April 14th and 15th. Diabolical DVD, Fierce Literature, and Convicted Printing, all of which you guys can find links for their stuff in the show notes below. Also down there, you'll find links to our podcast, more movie reviews like this, all of our social media, Patreon, and most importantly, our mental health resource library. So click the links in the show notes below, and let's talk about the friendship game. So this movie tells the story of four friends that essentially pick up a ancient game. Uh, I guess that's the best way you put it. It's a it's a game that kind of looks almost... I'll talk about what it looks like here in a few minutes. But basically, you put your hands on it, and you, de you reveal your deepest desires, and then supernatural forces test the friendship of the people involved in said game. So, yeah, if you guys have seen Cabinet of Curiosities, and you guys have seen the third episode of The Autopsy, the... The design for this game kind of looks like the spaceship from the autopsy. So, there's that. That has nothing to do with my thoughts or feelings on this movie. I just liked the connection, and it's a recent connection. So, if you guys have seen Cabinets of Curiosity, I'm working my way through right now. And uh, just <laughs> let me know what your favorite one has been so far. But getting back to the friendship game... This movie, I am going to say, could be one of the worst movies of the year. So the setup for this movie is each individual like character gets to tell their own like arc or like their own side of the story throughout the first two acts of this movie. And I dug that. I thought that was a really interesting concept for uh, kind of how to set this movie up. And then by the time it got to the third and fourth person, I really didn't care about these characters. So Peyton List is probably the most notable star in this movie. Uh, List obviously is from the Netflix smash Cobra Kai. And the movie really uses that as its advantage, I guess, which love it or hate it. List is arguably the most developed character in all of this movie. Like, everyone kind of has their, like, one thing that makes them. Brendan Mayer wants to be a good partner in a relationship. Kelsey Moima, who plays Court, really just wants to get into a university. Caitlin Santa Juana, who plays kind of the shadowy figure of the movie, really just wants to... Be friends with these people. And Dylan Schwamabing, I probably mispronounced that name, and if I did, I'm really sorry. He just exists in this movie for some odd reason. Like, he was in Watchmen. He was a great part in Watchmen. When I say Watchmen, I'm talking about the HBO series. We did a whole series about it, and we'll probably and we will be doing more with it next year. Links are in the show notes below to check out what we've already done. But he plays like a computer hacker that is kind of like supposedly linked to this group, but the movie never develops it. I try to bring like a supernatural edge into this movie and with specifically with his character Kyle Jr. and like the like the core group of friends and this it just doesn't work. The pacing of this movie is literally all over the place. Like, I didn't necessarily mind the setup of, oh, we're going to kind of explore each of these characters' desires for this opening sequence and keep coming back to this. Like, I didn't mind that at first. And then the movie somehow just ends up contradicting one another by the time it gets to the third act. And there's like a subplot that the film introduces where there's like a party that all of these kind of group of friends meet at and 
uh, Duana's character Cotton goes dis disappears at this that quickly just kind of like is a thread of the plot that just kind of gets gets breezed over and it kind of keeps like bringing back as the characters kind of get quote developed this party kind of is like a central portion of their development for some odd reason then by like the time that like the third act is kind of like unveiling i'm like oh this is this is supposed to be a mystery and it's it's a it's very poor at like kind of giving you that and i kind of i guess in some odd way like i respect a film that is kind of like actually not spoon feeding you it, it does feel refreshing in that one but it's such a mess to get through that by the time you actually realize that it's like oh this is kind of like a choose your own adventure kind of movie you just you're, you're bored you're bored out of your mind i hate it the fact that these these characters are not only so unlikable but they are so paper thin like i can't even talk about the performances in this movie because they're just kind of meh they're not necessarily terrible but they're not necessarily captivating either i'm like this movie feels like it has stakes but actually does nothing with those stakes like, I'll talk about this more in the mental health section of this, but I know for me personally and as a viewer that when there are stakes that are challenging relationships that I actually care about, like, those stakes feel real to me. Those ang that anxiety is very uh, just terrifying to me that these relationships that I love and I genuinely care about could be cease to exist at any moment's notice that terrifies me and the writers had a brilliant concept that they could have actually taken that fear and stretched it out to a 90 minute movie with some supernatural elements in here and they failed at it i will say though that once the film kind of starts diving into the supernatural stuff the visuals that come with that supernatural stuff really cool like this movie looks actually pretty stunning like visually but those sequences are maybe maybe six minutes of a 87 minute movie and that duration is also including credits i really don't know what more to say about this movie i encourage you guys to check it out for yourselves and when it comes on into theaters video on demand and uh digital beginning november 11th but let's run this through our Rorschach rating scale. This one for me is going to easily get a 1 out of 5. The Friendship Game was 87 minutes of boredom for me. But I really hope that there's someone out there that really loves this movie. And let's talk about mental health. If you guys are new to our content, Mental Health Moment is where we take a theme of mental health. And we talk about it for a few moments in the hopes to deconstruct the stigma surrounding mental health. Rather than actually picking out a quote or a sequence from a movie like i typically do this movie serves as a cautionary tale about the importance of not only community but being vulnerable with that community as the trailer we'll go on and talk about so this is not a spoiler but if you guys have seen the trailer for this movie what ends up happening is the secrets and the desires of the four group in within the group actually end up becoming tested and uh reach a point where the tension uh, of the climax of this movie within the group actually almost crescendos into a breakup real community and real friends are those that are going to be there and stand with you regardless of the things that occur in your life, your political views, your, your sexual identity, your gender identity, uh, what religion you are, all of what, whose political party you are, all of that stuff, test it and refine. It actually makes your community and your friendship that much stronger. That's the test and the calling card of a real legitimate friendship. I've had relationships over the years that uh have been tested and the relationships that i've had tested are the people that i talk to on a daily basis and i'm not when i say those words a daily basis i am just not meaning yeah like we comment each other as facebook status or tiktok videos 
No, these are people that I vent my soul to on a daily basis and vice versa. Let me just tell you about the, the mental health aspect and advantages of that is that I feel like I am as an individual valued and loved and because I'm having that love and value poured into me, I now understand my own self-worth and my own self-value because other people are showing it and telling me. As I've been stressing, community is one of the most vital things for mental health because I know that on days where I am just completely broken and I don't love myself or I don't understand my own value, it's important to have those people that can reaffirm who you are and why you're worthy of love. Like I'm just some random dude on the internet that you just happen to somehow subscribe to this channel or came across because you had an interest in a movie. I'm speaking from my own personal experience of being hurt by people over the years, tr putting trust in, and faith in people over the years, opening myself up and the wounds that those experiences have caused and how learning how to be vulnerable and safe with other people have also impacted and really really improved my own mental health and my own self my own like desires of like self-worth so get you even one person that you can pour yourself into and vice versa and someone that you can laugh with cry with and do life with you'll be amazed the benefits that it actually has for your mental health and your outlook on life I really hope this was an encouragement. You guys can check out uh, our mental health resource library currently if you're struggling with mental health uh, issues, including depression or suicide, self-harm or addiction. All of those links are going to be in the show notes below. The Friendship Game is going to be on VOD, digital, and in theaters beginning November 11th from RJLE Films. And make sure that you guys hit the subscribe button below and we'll be back later in this week with some brand new podcasts and more movie reviews. Have a good night, guys.